What is the difference between venom and poison? Evolution has resulted in many different types of offense and defense animals utilized to either capture the prey or protect themselves from becoming one. Some animals use sharp teeth and powerful jaws to take down their target with a single bite, while others use camouflage to remain hidden from their predators. However, there's one weapon and one defense mechanism that stand above all. This is Wild Facts, and today we will compare venom with poison. We're going to explore the differences and similarities between these two types of toxins and see which species can produce the most dangerous substances in the animal kingdom. Before we start, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you're the first one to see our new video. Venom 101 Before comparing venom with poison head to head, let's take a deeper look at each of them separately. At its core, venom is a toxin that an animal injects into its victim. But what makes it fascinating is the sheer number of different toxins, their effects, and the delivery mechanisms there are. Venom is such an effective weapon for both predation and defense that it evolved independently over 100 times. It's one of the best examples of convergent evolution, which includes features that evolved in different species across different epochs. In other words, there were hundreds of starting points that could have led to different evolutionary outcomes, but they all ended up leading to some sort of venom system. As a result, you can find venom in every animal group. For the most obvious example, we can take snakes. These reptiles possess some of the strongest venoms and deliver them through hollow fangs after penetrating the skin of their prey. Snakes produce toxins in venom glands located between their eyes, and it's speculated that such glands evolved from similar salivary glands that produce non-toxic saliva. Venomous snakes are responsible for over 100,000 human lives each year, and at least four times as many cases of permanent damage, like limb amputation. However, they aren't the only venomous reptiles, as there are several venomous lizard species. For example, the Gila monster inhabiting the U.S. produces venom in its lower jaw, and instead of injecting it, the lizard secretes the toxins through its teeth and chews it into the flesh of the victim. Most reptiles produce myotoxins, which damage the muscles and paralyze the prey. Moving on to anthropods, we can find a much larger variety of venom systems. For example, scorpions inject venom after striking their prey with a stinger located on the end of their tail. Centipedes secrete venom through the first pair of legs called forcibles. Finally, spiders deliver venom through fangs located on their chelicerae, simply called jaws. Most anthropods utilize neurotoxins which target the nervous system of the victim, affecting the function of neurotransmitters. It can cause a variety of negative effects ranging from paralysis to hypertension. Other invertebrates, like some species of mollusks and octopuses, also have venom. For example, all species of sea snails deliver the venom by shooting a modified tooth out of their heads as if it was a harpoon. Another example is a box jellyfish that produces cytotoxins, which target individual cells in the victim's body. This class of toxin is also used by honeybees, who produce and inject apitoxin, a mixture of cytotoxins and hemotoxins causing inflammation. Returning to the water, we can find over 1,200 venomous fish species, injuring over 50,000 people each year. For example, stingrays have anywhere from one to three stingers, also called spinal blades. They secrete venom that's delivered to the victim after penetrating its body. However, most interestingly, even some mammals are venomous. For example, male platypuses have venom-producing glands at their hind spurs. The venom consists of many different defenses, some of which are not found in any other natural venom. Before moving on to poison, it's important to know that venoms have an incredibly complex composition. Venom is basically a cocktail of various substances, including peptides, amino acids, lipids, and other compounds. Most of these compounds aren't toxic on their own, but result in a toxin when produced together by the animal. Finally, most animals utilize a single class of toxins, but some, like the previously mentioned bees, combine more than one class of toxin. But what about poison? Poison 101. Poison is a toxin secreted by an animal that works by being ingested orally, inhaled into the lungs, or absorbed through the skin. Unlike venom, it's not used to attack the prey, but rather as a protection against becoming the prey. However, just like venom, poison is a great example of convergent evolution and is found in many different taxa, including both invertebrates and vertebrates. 
It results in a wide variety of poisons ranging in production, effects, and use across the animal kingdom. For example, species of soapfish have glands in their skin that produce toxins called gramistins. When threatened, soapfish secretes the poison through the skin in the form of a frothy, bitter-tasting slime, deterring predators hoping for a bite. On the other hand, species of pufferfish don't have poisonous glands but contain tetrodotoxin, one of the most potent toxins found in nature. It's over 1,000 times more potent than cyanide, and one average pufferfish can contain as much of it to take down 30 grown men. The most fascinating part is that the pufferfish gets the poison from bacteria residing in their guts. The bacteria require a special diet to produce the poison, so pufferfish raised in aquariums at home won't be poisonous at all. Moving on from the water, we can find many poisonous species of amphibians, most notably poison dart frogs. There are over 170 species of these poisonous frogs, most of them featuring brightly colored skin. Similar to the pufferfish, they don't have glands producing the poison, but rather derive it from a diet consisting of ants and termites. The poison composition varies from species to species, but includes some of the most poisonous alkaloids. For example, a single golden poison frog contains enough poison to take care of 10 adult men. As these frogs secrete the poison through their skin, just briefly touching it can lead to serious health problems. Another animal that's dangerous to touch is the blister beetle. It contains a poison called cantharidin. Touching this beetle, as the name suggests, causes blisters at the area of contact that start developing as late as 10 hours after contact. Those who, instead of touching the beetle ingested it, can expect the poison to cause kidney damage. Finally, even some birds are poisonous. For example, some species of pitohui in New Guinea have feathers that contain batrachotoxin, the same poison as some species of dart frogs in the Amazonian. Just like most poisonous animals, these birds don't produce the poison themselves, but get it from their diet. Now, let's see how poison compares with venom directly. Venom versus poison. The main difference between venom and poison is that venomous animals actively use toxins by injecting them into the victim by a sting or bite. On the contrary, poisonous animals use their poison passively and their toxins are only dangerous when ingested, inhaled, or absorbed. As a result, venom is mostly used by predator species that are using it to hunt prey, while poison is a purely defensive mechanism that cannot be used for predation. Another difference between these two types of toxins is that venom is produced by the animal itself, while poison is usually derived by the animal from its diet. Also, venom is stored in the glands where it's also produced, while poison can be found in a wider range of organs, including the liver and skin. It's time to talk similarities. While venom is usually associated with predators, there are many animal species that utilize it for self-defense, just like the poisonous animals use their toxin for self-protection. Finally, both venom and poison are used in medicine. These toxins are either used as the very ingredients for some pharmaceuticals or as an inspiration leading to a safer synthetic version of the toxin that can be used therapeutically. For example, a drug called Captropil was based on the venom that's found in the Brazilian pit viper. Another, albeit not that successful, example is batrachotoxin, which can be found in some poison dart frogs. Scientists used it to produce a painkiller that's 100 times more potent than morphine. Unfortunately, it's not used commercially as the line between therapeutic and lethal dose is too thin for it to be worth it. As you can see, venom and poison are pretty similar and the main thing differentiating them is the method of delivery. That's it for today's video and thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and suggestions for future videos in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed watching, subscribe to our channel and check out our previous videos. Until next time.